pain mechanism theories uh, have been around for millennia. <laughs> humans are curious by nature. Humans want to understand how things work. And I think being aware of the history of the mechanisms that have been proposed is really vital to understanding where we are now and how we apply concepts to our clinical work and how we fit the research that we have into those concepts to see if what we're doing might in fact lead somewhere. If I take the approach that if we don't ever study history, we're likely to make the same mistakes over and over again. And the same argument holds true in my mind for history of theories that people have used or models they have used to try to describe a very complex organism, the human or other mammals that have sophisticated nervous systems. I do think it's critical that a clinician has some sense of the history on how we got to where we are, because most of the science that we follow, if you read science, uh, scientific journal papers, most of that stems from theories and models. And science at its core is about testing theories and models and trying to disprove hypotheses. And so if we're not understanding what it is we're trying to prove or disprove in what we do, then we might take an avenue that in fact pulls us in a direction that may not help folks or might offer an explanation that's completely implausible. And at some point you reach the end of that line and then someone's left not understanding what their condition is or what they can do about it. So the history of it I believe is equally as important as understanding the current science and what all the researchers in the world are trying to do to prove or disprove the theories we have and everybody uh, ultimately is working towards the same goal which is to try to find ways to help alleviate suffering. I don't think that patients necessarily need to have all the knowledge on pain mechanism theories. But I think some information is useful. Um, for example, we have some understanding of various mechanisms by which our cells interact with each other and communicate chemical information and electrical information, and some, inform some understanding of how the brain interprets that information. And for a patient to understand that chemical signaling from the body to brain follows a specific pathway and that we might have an opportunity based on what we know on so say the gate control theory. We might have an opportunity to influence that messaging system by using an intervention. Sometimes those theories and models can provide an, a nice easy explanatory platform for patients. So there is value in that. Um, I think it's less necessary for a patient to understand the history of the theories behind mechanisms um, causing pain, but a clinician certainly has a responsibility to, responsibility to understand the science if they're treating people.